What's happening? What's happening? It's another edition of the vlogs from your homeboy, Mr. Capone. All right. Topic today. Um, Could have took the homies to mainstream. Why we didn't go to mainstream? Chicano music, South Sider homies, whatever. Two of the main reasons. One, obviously, is because of the hate. And I'll, I'll get to that real quick. Second reason, my bad for shaky camera. Um, second reason, um, you know, gang stuff, stuff like that. So let me get to the topic. I hear a lot of these new artists talking about like why we ain't on the radio, why we on that, why we on that. Now for our genre, obviously the first guys like Kid Frost, Ladder, Shade of Brown, they were on major labels and they got radio. So, you know, they did their thing to what extent. Um, later on the times came around, MB Riders, Little Rob, Mr. Capone, Brown Boy. I mean, we got radio play. We were getting played all around the world. We're charting number one. I, I have a platinum album. I have a gold album independently and through big stores selling together. Um, I broke a lot of sales records, everything. Now, when I used to get played on the radio, a couple of times when I uh, upstate, they played my stuff. You know, I get phone calls from uh, DJs like, what's the Southern California, this and the Northern stuff? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, music is music. People going to hate. So that kind of threw them off a little. Major labels were asking the same questions. What's this about? I like, you know, it is what it is. Comes with the territory, but they weren't really tripping. They weren't tripping just like how in the black genre, the Bloods, Crips, all that. They know something new. But then I remember DJs and radio people and uh, record labels would be like, if anyone's going to pop out of your genre, Capone, you're one of the main ones. You know, there was Little Rob too, but he stuck on that lane, which is cool. But I kind of broke the barriers because I did songs with Twister. I had songs with um, big names and I had a lot of fans of all kinds of nationalities and races. I mean, Asian fans, black fans, Hispanic, of course, was my major one. And they go, you know what? You you actually going to be the one that could break open the door. But then I got played on L.A. Power 106. And back then, you know, other artists is in the Chicano rap genre. I've been, you know, obviously I've been hated from the beginning. Jealous rappers and shit start hating. You know, I'm not going to say names of all the beefs and the hates. I won't even call it beef. I would just call it jealousy. A lot of jealousy from way back in the days happened, and I've been a victim to that. But my songs were number one on the radio. Power 106 had me on the top three. Kiss FM LA was rating me top three. Everything was on point. It was just these messages that the DJs would get. And then they were like, oh, I don't know, man. A lot of racism going on about this. This Chicano rap genre, we're playing Little Rob. We're playing Brown Boy. We're playing Mr. Capone. And we're getting all these weird things like Little Rob was getting played up north. Everybody was there in Northern California dissing Little Rob because obviously he's from Southern California. I mean, that comes with the territory. I understand. But that affected him to becoming a 50 cents today or any one major. And if they were smart up there, they should let the homie blow up because they would have opportunities too if he got to the 50 cent level. But they didn't do that. You know, it comes with the territory. And that was that was kind of like the cap on that. Brown Boy, num top record in the area. Also down, also, um, Brown Boy had Superman blowing up. But then the haters, oh, he's not cholo enough. He's not gangster. In those, in those days, everybody was looking for the gangster shit. So they were kind of like saying, well, he's not gangster enough. They don't, you know, they kind of like hated on him for that. I mean, come on, man. Anybody who's making it, you got to show love. Then comes me, hit records after hit records. Don't get it twisted. I had one with Nate Dogg. Man, I had some oldie but goodie classics that went platinum on this music alone. And then the race issue. Oh, he ain't, he ain't this, he ain't Mexican, he's Puerto Rican, he's Arab, he's this, he's that, Pakistani. I mean, all this stuff that radio DJs are like, man, why so racist? Then they would read my comments and they'd be like, I had a song with Twister, right? I mean, I don't like to dis disrespect any race, but there were comments like, why is he doing it with the Mayate? Why is he doing it with, with the blacks? He's ruining it. 
fuck that, fuck a pony. Like now, new generations, they even saying the the n word. But I just did a, basically a song, and I got hated. And then all the record labels, they all seen it. All the big CEOs, guys who were like all the way up there in the game. There's P Diddy's, like all these big dogs who are gonna put their money, Dre, everybody who's gonna put their money in this whole m movement wave that was going on. They seen all those negative racist comments. Then they seen racist comments to me. They seen racist comments on that. A and R's were telling me, "Look, Capone, you cool. You're gonna hustle and you're gonna make money. You're gonna be on top. You're gonna be a king. You're gonna be like living in a mansion one day. You got sales. You you the man. But we can't take you to mainstream because your genre is full of racism." I looked at it and like I don't know what to say because I was a victim of it too. I was like, well. I'm going to continue doing my thing. I'm going to represent the homies. I'm going to keep that shit real. But at the end of the day, if it is what it is, and I think if our genre wasn't racist, and today they're still racist, they still think they're hot shit. Some people still throwing racial shit. There's new I, I Instagram pages. Like when I, they show a picture of me, racism. Now with the blacks, it's actually got a little cooler because people are trying to kiss ass now, but... Obviously, the black community sees that, but solid Chicano rap fans and solid Mexican-American fans, I, I mu got much love for you guys because you guys are a powerful movement. You could actually take someone to the top, but it's these little negative-minded people that ruin it for everybody. And shit, I could have been there. I'm not complaining. I don't really give a fuck if, I, if I, I'm Drake one day or not. Obviously, it didn't happen, but I'm still living like a boss. But um, I'm happy where I'm at, but... By me being that Drake, there would have been five, six, seven other more guys. We would have had celebrities on TV. We would have been doing a big, popping in the club. Rasa movement could have came up. Business, clothing lines, uh, TV shows. Everybody would be making so much money. Our community wouldn't be that low. But it is what it is. God decides. He sees the evil intention of some people. And he puts us where we at. I'm happy where I'm at. Some people didn't make it in life, and the genre kind of got stuck on a pause. But we can still change this thing, man. Hopefully, positivity can come out of this. I know this is a long segment, but I hope you guys realize and understand what happened and all that shit. All right? Hopefully, I made myself clear. Um, just want to give a shout-out to everybody who's supporting me. Please, when you see racism, especially on my comments, stand up for, for a brother, for a for, you know, for uh, just in general, show love because we got to show that we ain't racism. I mean, they could be racist to me and somebody, somebody could easily be like, well, I'm not I'm not one of him, so I'm going to turn my cheek. They could be racist to someone who's Salvadorian. They could be racist to somebody who's South American, Armenian, whatever it is. If they're representing the genre, man, it's your right to back them up, to just help this community out because it, it takes one it shows unity is power, and power is only happens through unity. Another edition of the vlogs. Hope you guys like it. Your homeboy, Mr. Capone. I'm still hood famous, and I'm still fucking chilling in the mountains like a motherfucking G. Hate me or love me, I still won the battle. But I'm still here for the whole community, and I wish this genre can blow up one day. Whether it does or not, I don't know. But... I'm actually going to exercise my right of just doing universal music now because the stilo has been fucked up. You all know what I'm talking about. But hey, it's all good. Much respect, your homie, Mr. Capone. The loco. Oh. Ciao. Yeah, once again, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button. And these all right here are gems for you guys. These are all throwbacks. Throwbacks from 2016 or before. I've been doing these podcasts before anybody, so you know what I'm saying? Make sure you check out some of these gems, these big throwbacks. You're hoping Mr. Capone, that's right, the one and only. Oh.